What is going on, juveniles? Welcome back to another episode of the Juvie Podcast this Saturday. Before we get into this amazing guest, please make sure to, if you're listening on any audio platforms, download the episode, leave us a review, five stars if you can, and also hit that follow button. And also, if you're watching on YouTube, please make sure to like this video, hit subscribe, and make sure the notification bell is on. Also, leave a comment telling us how much you love this episode. Now, over tonight to intro the guest. You guys, I'm excited for this one. I know you're excited for this one. You clicked on it for one reason, one reason only. You guys have seen him on TikTok. You've seen him on Instagram. You definitely haven't seen him in the middle of the ocean, but he's there. Guys, today we're talking with Captain Jack, Mr. Jack Whitaker. Welcome to Juvie. Hey, guys, what's going on? So excited to have you on here today. Before we dive into anything more about you, we this has been a hard episode to make happen because yeah. you're traveling the world. You're on the other side of the world currently. So why don't you kind of break down what you're doing and where you are right now? So currently, we just uh, we just left Greece. We got the new satellite, Elon Musk's Starlink, which is what I'm using right now to stream this podcast. And we're going to Turkey to do boat maintenance because you know it's a boat. It's got to have work done to it. So we're going to Turkey, getting boat work done. We're just in the Mediterranean, having a good time. So sick. Uh, it's just absolutely crazy nowadays that we have the technology to make it happen, that we can record a podcast with someone in the middle of the ocean. It's crazy. Uh, which we think is very cool, very sick. Um, and as some of our audio listeners and video watchers will know, we've had your brother on this podcast a couple of times. We're good friends with him. And we thought, you know, we got to talk to the yeah, older yeah. brother. Um, so we wanted to get your experience and your, um, your views on living on a boat as a little bit of an older guy. Yeah, so a lot of people ask me this because I meet people at boat yards, yards and they ask, what do you do? What do, you do? I live on a boat. I've been, boat. On I've been living on the boat for the past years. seven years. And it's really, and it's really I don't find, I don't it, find different. it different because, because I lived on land for a very short time in my life. Like for you guys, like for you guys living on land is normal. For me, living on a boat is normal. It's just, you know, second nature for me. Yeah, I mean it's, it's yeah, just I mean normal it's it's just like normal to me. Work, like the boat work, the the work that has to be work done, that has to be done, putting up sails. Putting up it's, sales. Just, it's just basic everyday things in life. Yeah. yeah, it's it's just crazy how we can all live such different lives, but with normal to one person is completely crazy to the other. Yeah. But Jack, for the people that don't really know your guys' background, you've now been sailing for nine years. But as the older brother. You lived on land a little bit longer than your younger brother and your younger siblings. Do you, you grew up in Texas, I believe. Do you remember any of that before you got on the boat? Yeah, yeah, for sure. We were homeschooled back then. I was homeschooled up until three years ago, four years ago. I graduated homeschool. I've been homeschooled all my life. And yeah, Texas, we lived in the suburbs, in the city. So, and being homeschooled, I didn't have a lot of friends. So I didn't really get out much. But then, when I was 13, my dad decided to sell the house in Texas and move on to the boat. Also, also we had a house in Montana that we went to. It was like a vacation house at the time. So we went from the house in Texas to the ranch in Montana. We kind of went back and forth for a while until my father was tired of the rat race. He was tired of everything we were doing and left. That's crazy. So, And you guys make... Um as your family YouTube channel, that's the, the income that supports you guys living on the boat, right? Yeah, basically. My dad saved up a lot in his oil and gas business, and he sold it. Wow. I, I It's interesting. So every time that we record, well, we recorded with Finn twice, and every time as I'm reading through the comments, there's people that feel like they know how to tell your guys' story better than Finn. So there'll be people like, well, you know, this is actually what the father did and, like, all these different things. And I'm like, guys, I don't think it's that big of a mystery. Yeah. But I'll get the, I'll get the questions answered. So what was it that your dad did before he sold either his shares in the company or sold his company entirely? Yeah, so he was, he was the CEO, basically. Him and his partner went half and half on an oil and gas business. So basically what they did back in Texas... They built it from the ground up. My dad started with like a couple thousand dollars in a dream. And so he started it with his, uh, just his friend at the time, his business pal, just digging ditches and putting pipe in the ground to transport gas and oil. And he made that, he was really good at it, spent a lot of years of his life slaving away. So I'm very fortunate to have the parents that I have that did sacrifice so much. I know a lot of people say that it's daddy's money and it's all this, which it is. But I know that he had to go through heck to get it. And so, yeah, he did that. 
sold his business, was tired of just living repeated, on repeat, basically. And was like, hey guys, do you want to go live out in the wilderness full time? Or do you want to go sail the world? And we were like, we want to go sail. So that's what we did. Wait, Dang. so there, there was an option there that I haven't actually heard. Finn never told us that. There was an option to go live in the wilderness? Yeah, yeah. And we had been living in it back and forth, like I said, for, I don't know, like three years, four years. And we, I mean, it's the ocean. It's the sea. It's the, I, I grew up watching Pirates of the Caribbean, and I still watch it to this day. It's my favorite TV sh movie series ever. And I was like, hell yeah, let's go live on the ocean. See what that's about. And also being named Jack, now being on a boat, you are literally Captain Jack Sparrow, which I think is so sick. Exactly. Wait, hold on. So I have to, I have to ask a clarifying question. When you say living in the wilderness full time, is that like camping? No, no, no. Okay, we have a ranch up there in Montana. It's a, it's just a cabin with a barn just out in the boonies. You wouldn't even know where it is if I pointed it out on a map. Okay. Yeah, I think I would have gone with the sailing as well. Though. Yeah, me too. Josh, let me ask yeah. you this: If your dad were to sell everything he had right now and come to you at the age you're at now, and he's like, "Hey, we can go live on a sailboat." Would you take him up on the offer? Absolutely not. Really? No. Really? No. Absolutely not. Okay, Josh at 13. At 13? Probably. Yeah. Yeah, now, no. So, Jack. Well, why not? Yeah, let's go. I like land, and I feel like I've got plans <laughs> in the next couple of years that involve me being on land. Um, if I was younger and I didn't have, like, plans coming up, then I definitely, I probably would. I think that would be a sick experience. I think if someone were to come to me and be like, hey, you could do it for two, three months, a year, I think I'd probably take them up on it. Yeah. But So, Jack, let me ask you this. If, if your dad were to do this three years later, you were 16, 17, 18, do you think your answer would have been a little bit different if you were more, you know, more used to living on land, had more of like a community built up? Would you have still been so fast to say yes? You know, now that you say that, Josh brought up a really valid point there. If I had lived on land for such a long time and built the relationships and connections and was really involved with what I was doing, I'd probably have the same answer. I'd probably be doing some sport, you know, trying to make my own way, have a boring job doing something, not even involved in social media at all. I mean, I don't know, but so I, I probably would have the same answer as Josh. I might not say yes. Yeah. It's just, it's hard when you get to that age because you've built up, hopefully you've built up some good friends. Yeah. You've got plans to maybe move out on your own at some point. You like, you're about to start a career. I feel like it'd be so hard to just up and leave. Um, but you just mentioned social media. So I wanted to dive into a little bit of that. How initially did you get started in your personal social media platform? That's a great question. So I, I've always been doing Instagram for, since we started sailing is when I really just started posting my travels and then just recently we were in Egypt six months ago I think and Finn posted that one video showing off his family members and I was at the very end and you know this sounds kind of selfish and all about myself but basically everybody went crazy they thought I was the best looking guy in the world so I was like okay how do I capitalize off this how could I use this to my advantage and so I started posting, and it's done pretty well so far. That's crazy. So right now you sit over half a million followers, and you said you just started a few months ago. So for anyone that doesn't understand, that's pretty rapid growth. Yeah. I remember seeing that TikTok, and at that point, we had already had Finn on the show once. And I was like, and I literally, I remember me and Josh talking about this. We're like, dude, if Jack capitalizes off this, this is definitely a career-starting opportunity. Yep. We talked about it, and then sure enough, you started. So that, that, was a, that was a great, you know, a great thing to take advantage of. So when that yeah, yeah. video first went viral and I saw you starting, it made me think, I have brothers and I know there's friendly competition between me and my brothers. Is there any friendly competition between you and Finn when it comes to social media and the following and the numbers? Uh, bro, it's... So, so you know, you know only the only way, way for me to see who follows me on TikTok, TikTok is to go, is through, to go the through the famous, famous people who they follow. Who they follow. Mm. And me and, and, him, me and him go back and forth like, oh, such and such followed me and such and such followed me. And there is there is competition there, of course, but... We love each, we love each other, so we, so we only want the best. Want the best like, he's, like, he's letting me use his setup, setup right now, his laptop, laptop his camera, camera. Big shout because, because he knows that, he knows that this is something I really, really wanted to do. Yeah, absolutely. He kickstarted kick all of this, all of this. And, and I enjoy watching his YouTube videos. I enjoy everything he puts out. He's got a talent 
something special there. He was yeah. something nice. special there. He, he, if you guys have cool. never watched Fins, when we first had him on, he had just posted his first vlog. Yeah. Since then, he's been super consistent. It is crazy. I just have to talk about that for a minute. His storytelling yeah. is very, very well done. He does all his own music, all his own cinematography, everything. Incredible. Shout out Finn. Crazy there. And I think it's good to have healthy competition. I think that's how you grow. If you guys were just like, oh, nice, that video went viral. But if you're like, no, I want to top that, yeah. listen, that makes someone create better content. So I have to ask. You said that you got some famous people following you. I'm assuming there's some famous people in the DMs. I have to know, who's the biggest celebrity that slid in the DMs, Jack? <laughs> the biggest celebrity. Okay. Man. The person with the most followers, either James Charles or Ivani. No way. Slid in your DM. No way. Yeah, man. Yep. Oh, okay, okay. Maybe not Ivani, but she followed me, and we talk on and off. What? But, is but it's, it's, it's just... It's uh, purely out of uh, me awing it, their their talent and whatever it is they do. Definitely. What did James Charles DM you about? I So originally he followed me and I texted them. I said, hey man, thanks for the follow. I love what you put out. And he goes, no way, man. It's no problem. He, he says he watches my videos, man. And I was like, James Charles watches my videos? There's no way. So that really put an image on my head of my scope and my reach of what I actually could do if I stay consistent and on the grind. Yeah, I think sometimes we forget like when a, when a video does a million views, you forget. Because unfortunately with social media, we, sometimes you just look at the numbers and you forget it's a real person. Yeah. So when you think of a million views, you're like that, that's, like that could fill up. 10 massive stadiums yeah and you realize just the reach that that has it's like us going to yeah to like the biggest concert in the world yeah and just sitting on that stage and talking about one of our clips yeah it's crazy it's, it's kind of insane so it like i want to know how it feels for you having over five hundred thousand followers just while being out in the middle of the ocean when you can't really tell that there's people there like how does that feel for yeah. you yeah so it's, it's a, a very, very humbling, humbling thing. thing. For, For me, me I've, I've always, always viewed social media as a tool. Say I'm building a house and I have a tool belt. There are certain tools I need in order to build the house that I want. Yeah. Just like my future. If I'm trying to build my future, there are certain tools I need that can make building my future that much easier. And I see social media as being just that. And I give props to everybody who watches me. It is the most humbling thing when I walk out and I meet people who say, you're that, you're that guy on that YouTube and that TikTok. And I'm like, yeah, that's me. And I love getting to know them. It's, I know, I think it's a beautiful thing. Well, it's crazy for you. Like that, I mean, that situation you just explained, like imagine you're sailing around the world, you pull up, you're in a new country, you get off the boat and someone just knows you. Yeah. Like that's why. That's dude. crazy. That's so cool. And I would imagine, you know, like your reach is pretty global considering that you're, you're going to all these different countries. So over the past six months, you guys have been to a handful amount of countries. What's been your favorite country that you've visited on the sailboat? So, the U.S., of course. It's my homeland. Okay. Australia and Fiji. Okay. Those are the three. My, my top three are those three. No particular order. Okay. Well, I've been to two out of the three of those. Yeah. Australia was great. I didn't necessarily go on no a sailboat, way. but I went there. It was the first time I ever left the country. For some reason, growing up, my goal when it came to traveling was I want to go the farthest away. And I learned at some point that Australia was like a 17-hour plane flight. And I was yeah. like, that's the farthest. And so I went. It was a great experience. And then USA, second. Yeah. You know you know what's interesting? Definitely not like, the farthest. but <laughs> No, but plane-wise, yeah. it was like the farthest from San Francisco. Yeah. I mean, I don't think there was actually any farther than 17 hours. Maybe like Dubai or something. That's some pretty but, far ones. Uh, yeah, if you're going to go to like somewhere like super remote, yeah. it's probably crazy. But you forget like – yeah, go ahead. What did you do in Australia? Where did you go? We went to we so we flew into Sydney. We stayed in Sydney for a few days, and then we went and visited um, in this place called Adelaide, which is this small, yep. like yep. the smaller town. You've been there. I I know where it is. We didn't yeah. stop. There, though. And I think it was 
that was a great experience because I think I got to see both sides. Like, okay, Sydney, you know, you're in the city, amazing food, very, very nice people. Anyone that ever asked me, I would say that Australia is like, I mean, I've only left the country once, so it's pretty hard to compare it. But I just feel like overall a great place to like go and vacation. Very nice people, great food. Mm -hmm. And then Adelaide kind of gave me like the flip side of like, okay, this is what normal living would be like yeah. here. You know, this is a smaller, a smaller town. It was overall great experience. Yeah, I've got friends yeah. who live in Adelaide and it's really? like much more quaint like farmer's land yeah exactly yeah. but i think that was like that was good for me to realize that like not everyone lives in sydney and it's not just like this perfect yeah this perfect city okay so you mentioned usa as the homeland so before you went on the sailboat you lived there until you're 13 what's one thing that you miss about living on land oh the mountains and the trees dude so we go driving here sometimes we rent a car and go driving and just the smell of the trees and the flowers is something i miss so much yeah, I mean, do you, I never really thought about this, but you must get pretty sick of ocean smell. Because, like, I love the ocean smell, but I only get to go to the ocean a couple times a year. You must be, like, completely sick of the smell it's of fish. Every day. It's every day you smell the ocean. And, you know, when you're smelling something and doing something every day, it's eventually going to get stale. And it's not that it's, it's not so much stale, but it's just so normal to me. That it, ma it makes me value and miss the things back from when I did live in the States. And it's crazy. It's probably good for everyone listening that lives on land to realize that, you know, it's not just like the perfect life. But let me ask you this. How do you keep yourself grateful for the opportunities of getting to travel to a bunch of different countries and like, you know, reminding yourself that not everyone gets to live that life? How do you keep your mindset in a positive setting? A really good way I do that. I go on runs, right? I go running and I, I talk to the locals. Like most of the locals I talk to, Greek people, Saudi Arabian people, anybody, Tanzanian people, African, you know, Australian, any kind of people you can think of, I talk to them. And I have met a lot of people and I have gotten a glimpse into their life and what they do. And, you know, it's like, uh, what am I trying to say here? I've gotten a glimpse of their life. Man, I completely lost my train of thought. I think I think I get what you mean. You got like a glimpse of their life and realize that you get to like live all of their experiences. Yeah. But not have to like be be nailed down. Cause yeah, cause most of those people want to go travel. They want to do stuff and they want to go see the world. A lot of the people, a good place I could uh, give you an example is Tanzania. It's not a rich country by any means. It's uh, people make very, very low amount of money. And the people there are so friendly. Some of the nicest people you'll ever meet. And they would kill to be in a position like mine. So it's a very humbling thing to know that I'm out here. And I try every day to wake up and to go do something, jump in the water, go for a run. I went on a run this morning at 5.30 because I knew I had a call and we were leaving. And that's basically it. Yeah, I think... I think that would be something that like, and I think we, we, you know, we actually just talked about this on an episode a few weeks ago that will be coming out sometime during the summer about like how we forget the privilege that we have growing up in America. And for you, it's, it's a little bit different, but you know, growing oh, up, absolutely. getting to see all these countries that like people, most people will never actually visit a fraction of the countries that you visited. I would hope one day that I get to do that, but it's just like putting it into perspective that like. You know, at some point, we all still have little things. You know, you always wish what you don't have. Yeah. So it's like, I wish, okay, I could go live on a sailboat. And you're saying that, you know, there is certain things that you miss about land. So I think that's good to put in perspective because I think on social media, and you know this, you know, people see the highlights. People see the great parts that everyone wants to consume. If you were to just go on there and talk about your problems or the things you missed, you probably would be, you know, painted in a negative light. And no one wants to consume that type of content. Yeah. So I think it's very, very interesting the way that you put that. Absolutely. Yeah, and um, so I've I've been to a few countries. I've been I think to about seventeen or eighteen different countries, um, but I've always got like the pretty much the most touristy version of that, where it's like going to the big city, spending time in there, and like doing stuff like that. Do you find that living on a sailboat and going to these different places, you get more of a local, um, like home type view of these different countries instead of more of a touristy like you just flew there type of thing? Yeah, Josh, let me tell you, in the Maldives, 
So you know the Maldives, of course. Everybody knows the Maldives. You know the best islands, beautiful islands, resorts, everything you could imagine. We were invited to a regatta, and a regatta is basically a bunch of cruiser boats just hopping from island to island and seeing what each island has to offer. And then it ends once you basically visit the last island and they throw a party and you go your merry way. At this regatta, we went to like the localest local spots you could think of. You know, people wearing just whatever they could find. And it's crazy how some of them live, man. It's a peaceful, very primal, a very respected way of life. I love how they live. It's like if you go to like some old mountain towns and you see people living off of cows and goats and chickens. It's like that except on the islands. And you know social media is really really good at glamorizing the Maldives. If you go to the Maldives their main island Mali it's a trash place. There's trash all over the streets. It's like uh, it's not that great of a place but the resorts and stuff they're there yeah basically yeah that's so cool i feel like that would be my favorite part about traveling all over the world from going from dock to dock then you just get to meet the most local people that that brings me to a question that i don't even have written down but i think it'd be interesting to hear your perspective on do you feel like when you sail into a new country the locals tend to be welcoming or do they tend to be reserved at first until they understand your motives a welcoming absolutely most of at all of the places i've been except maybe australia because Australians, you gotta understand, Australians are like redneck, redneck Americans. They're the Australian version of redneck Americans. You know, they talk like this, and they're, they're crazy, mate. They're from down under. <laughs> so they're not the most, uh, you know, kind people. But basically, everywhere we've went, everybody is super nice to us. So have you had, let me ask you this. So I, every time, what's, Josh, what's it called when you're scared of, like, the deep sea? Oh, I can't remember, like, philosophobia. Philosophobia. Okay. I actually yeah, got yeah, it right. Okay, you remember. I don't have that fear, but you said that you did. Yeah. It's still true? Okay, so whenever I see, like, those TikToks of, like, these crazy creatures under the ocean, I always think, I'm like, dude, Finn and Jack are just out there right now. Like, yeah. what if a giant squid attacks them or something? So this makes me, this brings up my question. What has been the scariest experience while living on the sailboat? Okay. There's been a few. There's about... So the first, I'll tell you the first two. The first one was, believe it or not, it was on land. You want to hear the scariest experience while we've been on the boat or the scariest experience on the boat? Let's hear both. Overall, we'll yeah. Both. Oh, yeah. Both. Has it involved any animals, anything creepy? Although I will tell you one that did involve an animal. So the first one, the scariest one, absolutely takes the cake. We were on land in Australia in the outback. Like, in the middle of nowhere, you know, red rocks everywhere, completely flat, super hot, no cars, just one long road. We're trying to get to the center, because there's this big rock in the center, Ayers Rock, I think it's called. And we were on a road trip. We were going, and we took a stop. Everybody had to pee. We got out of the car, did our business. Everybody got back in. We shut the doors. We thought everybody was in. Dad put the car in forward, and clunk, clunk, we realized Kate wasn't in the car, my youngest sister. And then we all look at each other, what the heck just happened? We get out of the car, look under, she's laying there, you know, her pants, she squat, she squat in front of the car to do her business, and we just didn't realize she was there. You went forward, luckily, nothing Wait, happened. Nothing happened. She had like a broken had, like, fingernail, but that, fingernail but that was it. They pulled her from they out of the car, was, the hugging car her. was hugging her. My dad was off My cursing was up off a cursing storm. Up a Mom storm. was crying. Mom was it was crying. a traumatic, was a experience, traumatic man. experience, man. How old was she at this point? Like 11. Oh my god, well, like dude. Thank the Lord she's okay. How does Finn never mention this to us? That is insane. That's crazy. Wait, okay, so I have to know. What was the conversation in the car after this? Was she like mad at your dad or like was everyone just grateful she was okay? No, no. <laughs> So the first thing she said, mom was hugging her while her pants were down. She was naked from the bottom down. She had her shirt on. She was like, mom, let me get my pants on real quick. If we were just all just crying, it was the scariest thing, man. But it was, uh, it was, uh, what do you call it? An eye opener from there on. Dude, me personally, if I was peeing by the car and my dad run me over, I'd be, a, I'd be furious. 
<laughs> so I, I'm assuming after this, a head count became a normal tradition just to make sure that everyone's yes. back in. Okay. Wow. You, I mean, you got it on the money. That's that. I, didn't that, see that one coming. No, I okay, was I'm gonna be honest. Like, I wasn't see. I thought there was gonna be like some a shock or something. Spider or something. Yeah. Okay. So then, yeah. what's been the craziest one on the sailboat? I'm assuming no one's gotten run over. Yeah. So, in Fakarava. So Fakarava is this island in the middle of French Polynesia, the South Pacific. Random islands in the middle of nowhere. And every season, it's called. It's when fish breed and lay eggs and have more fish, caviar, the caviar, whatever. Fish have babies. And during the season, the sharks come out. Lots of sharks. So you gotta be on your eye, you gotta be on your game watching for sharks. And there's this one dive that you can do that goes through their islands called atolls. And they're a ring and it has one cut. You do a dive through the cut of this island. And in this dive, the current takes you, so you're just floating. You have a buoy, so the boat's tracking you, and you just float. You just sit there, still, just looking at everything floating by. We jump in the water. We get down to whatever it is, 40, 50 feet underwater. We're chilling. Everything's hold on, good. Hold on. Clarifying this... question here. You're under the water at this point? How are you breathing? Scuba diving. Wow. I thought you were free scuba... diving 40, 50 feet in a current. <laughs> I was like, you guys are crazy. All right, all right continue the story here. Okay, so we're scuba diving at 50 feet under the water. We see a few sharks over in the corner. Not a big deal. You see sharks all the time when you're scuba diving. We see some more. It's okay. We're like, we're like a little startled. There's like 10 or so sharks. Let's just keep going. They're not going to hurt us. We keep going, and within five minutes, there's walls of hundreds and hundreds of sharks, and we're just sitting there looking around, my sister's holding on to my dad, and we're just chilling, looking at all these sharks. They come, like, five feet in front of you, and you Jack, just got to push on, hold them on. aside. I, I don't know if our connection went out there. Did you say a hundred sharks? Yeah, somewhere in the thousands, maybe. Thousands of sharks. <laughs> what are you doing with thousands of sharks? How are you alive? <laughs> it's a, it, you'd have to do it, man. It is such a neat experience, because you're just sitting there floating past all these sharks, and you're hoping... You, you know, your legs are close. You're in, like, the fetal position, holding your legs close so one doesn't take a bite. And then you go out, you know, the current takes you, and then you just float up, and you're good. You know, personally, it's I'm just going to have to take your word for it on it being cool. <laughs> um, I, mean, I don't know if I'm going to find myself in front of thousands of sharks, but... I mean, dude, do you guys have any videos of this? Like, was this filmed? Yeah, we do. Oh, my we God. We do. It's okay. on our YouTube channel, Sailing Zatara. Okay. But I'll send you some video if dude, you'd like. we got to get we'll the footage of that. That is... That is, yeah, I mean, that would probably be one of the scariest for me. Yeah. But no sharks, no sharks bit anyone, and you guys are safe. So, hey, we're here. Yeah. Wow, dude. Dang. That is terrifying. Thousands of, thousands of anything is scary. Yeah, sharks especially. Yeah. For me, personally. I mean, if there's a thousand fish, I don't think I would be as... I'd, I'd still be spooked. It's like, well, they could, they could gang up on me right now. <laughs> a thousand fish. Okay. I have I have a question. We asked this also to Finn, but I want to know your your thoughts yeah. on it. What has it been like growing up on a family YouTube channel with kind of your life out in the public eye? So the camera's always been in my face, first of all. I'm used to the camera. You know, some people are shy on camera. They ask, how do you do YouTube? Mom started documenting this as for the family back at home. She just wanted to do a little documentary for the family. She started doing it, and it just completely took off. So she kept doing it, and since we've started a business, Sailing Zatara. And I find being in the public eye isn't a problem. As If you got nothing to hide, it's not a problem. So it's just, you know, I don't know any different again, because it's just been with me for the most important years of my life, so it's really normal to me. And I, I, gotta, I gotta assume that, like you're it, you'll be so grateful for this when you're older you know when you have kids it'll be crazy that your kids can go back and watch your life in a sense that's pretty cool yeah mm -hmm. but you gotta understand it does take away a little bit it takes away not a little bit it takes away a lot from the classic sailing traveling aspect of it we have some friends who do this who didn't film at all when they sailed and i was always envious of them because i always had a camera in my face Mom was always filming something, doing something, and it is it is a bit of a takeaway. But seeing as the position it has put me in, I'm thankful for it. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. That's sick. Um, so, Jack, I've got one last question for you. 
I saw yeah. one of your one of your TikToks of showing how you go get groceries while on the boat. So that you you jumped off the boat and then like plastic bagged it twice and then wrapped it around and mm -hmm. swam back with it. How real is that? Matt, okay. I loved making that video. That was one of the funnest videos I've made. It's not real at all. We have a dinghy and you know, because that's how I think most people think we get groceries is either swim or do something. So I wanted to do something like that. Yeah, no, we I thought a it, was a, it was a great video and I was like, so many people are going to believe that this is how oh, you just yeah. go get milk. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's basically like you. You have the house and you have the car. You take the car, you go get it, you come back, you unload it. Our car is a dinghy. It's like a smaller boat on our big boat. We go in, we stop at shore, we go to the stores, get a bunch of bags, just unload it. And that's how we do it. Awesome. Thanks. Well, listen, I have to ask the question that all the females watching want to know. And personally, I'm interested to hear what you have to say about this. Jack, what's the dating game like uh -oh. when you're living on this sailboat? Are you single? I know Avani's in your DMs. But for all the females listening, what's, what's this looking like, Jack? You know, like I said in the one video, my life, my love, and my lady is the sea. That's the only woman I need. That's where it's at. Oh, oh, wow. Good answer. He's going to keep it all mysterious he on is. us. Keep the ladies chasing him. Wow. Okay. Well. Okay. Let me ask. Let me ask a follow up question then, because I can't live the yeah, people yeah, with yeah. just that. It's my job. I got to get the good <laughs> stuff out of you, Jack. Here. Have yeah. you dated anyone or had any type of relationships while living on the boat? So let me tell you. I had a woman in New Zealand. I thought she was a wonderful woman. I wanted to start long term things with this woman, but I'm traveling, so I I just can't because she wasn't in a position to travel with me, and I wasn't in a position to stay with her. And I didn't want to stay in New Zealand because I was traveling. So that's, I think, one of the biggest negatives to traveling the world is constantly meeting and leaving people all the time. So basically, I just keep it at friends. And that's, that's worked out pretty well for me. I like it. Yeah. I like it. All right. Well, one yeah. last question. All the people want to know it. This was our last question that we asked Finn. Jack, is there any plans of leaving the sailboat in the next few years? Yes, actually there are. I say that, I say that. We get back to the U.S. in around November. And we're going to take a bit of a break from sailing. Because we've been doing it nonstop for the, as long as I can remember. So maybe we keep going and we get, we get tired of being in the mountains and we go sailing again. As far as I know, that, that's as much as I can tell you. Because I personally don't know. Well, guys... That's that's some crazy news we've just found out. It's breaking here first on Juvie, but Jack, listen, if you're in the USA, you know you gotta stop by, say what's up to the boys, we'll show 100%. you a little California experience, right. and we'll make it happen, all right? Absolutely. Awesome, you guys. Just, well, Jack, thanks so much for hopping on. It's been a blast. All Thank you guys, you guys for listening. having me. I of course. This. this is, it, it, it still blows my mind that we can make this happen from opposite right. sides of the world. It's such a cool time we're living in. But Josh, for all the people listening, how can they check out what Jack's doing? How can they check out what we're doing? So if you want to check out Jack, we're going to have his Instagram, his TikTok, his YouTube, everything linked in the bio. Uh, any other links that he wants us to put in there, they'll be in there as well. Um, and also, if you want to check out Juvie, if you want to follow us, if you want to keep up with us, follow us on Instagram, follow us on TikTok, hit that subscribe on YouTube, and make sure that you are downloading every single episode on all of those audio platforms. Guys, that's a wrap. That's a wrap.